Hello, my name is Diray, and I will be talking about fundamental understanding and following raw hammer today. This talk is going to be focused on reliable security and safety to avoid such kind of collapses. And when we talk about security, it's all about preventing unforeseen consequences, and we want to prevent unforeseen consequences on our platforms. Uh, with this context, let's talk about raw hammer. Raw hammer is a phenomenon where one can predictably induce bit flips in commodity DRAM chips, and most of the DRAM chips available today are vulnerable to raw hammer. And this is the first example of how a simple hardware failure mechanism can create a widespread system security vulnerability. And as a result, you see our Code like forget software, now hackers are exploiting physics. I'd like to remind you an early position in paper from IMW 2013 uh, about the memory scaling and in particular about the DRAM scaling problem. Uh, DRAM consists of one DRAM cell consists of one capacitor and an uh, access transistor and stores the uh, one bit of data uh, as an electrical charge on the capacitor. So the capacitor must be large enough for reliable sensing and access transistor should be large enough for low leakage and high retention time. Unfortunately, both of these uh, become challenging uh, as we scale down the technology. We observe that data from all Facebook servers worldwide that we present in the DSN 2015 show that uh, as DRAM chip density increases, the relative server failure rate also increases significantly. And you can uh, find the analysis and model and memory errors found in all of Facebook server fleet uh, in, in this particular paper. And uh, to avoid such issues and achieve safe, secure, and reliable operation, we need to understand such issues. And for that, we need infrastructures. And I'll talk about a paper uh, published in ISCA 14 uh, that uses such instruction uh, to investigate raw hammer phenomenon. And this this is the infrastructure we use in that paper, and we we have a temperature controlled environment uh, where we plug in the R modules into FPGAs, and we program FPGAs with a, a, a soft memory controller called SoftMT, uh, later on published in HPCA 2017. This is a flexible, easy to use, and open source uh, infrastructure. Okay, as a curious pheno phenomenon, uh, we observe that one can predictably induce uh, errors in most DRAM memory chips, and this is called DRAM row hammer. Uh, uh, and DRAM row hammer is a simple hardware failure mechanism that can create a white spread system security vulnerability. So uh, in DRAM, our cells are organized uh, as an array of DRAM rows. And to access a piece of data, uh, we need to first activate or open a DRAM row. And then uh, we can access uh, data inside this DRAM row. And then to access data in another DRAM row, we need to close the open row and then act, uh, open the other row. So when we do this open and close operation ma many times, uh, we observe bit flips in the physically adjusted DRAM row. Uh, so we, uh, uh, we name the row that we keep opening and closing as hammer row or aggressor row and the rows nearby affected rows and or victim row. Um, okay, so uh, in this study, we test uh, many DRAM modules uh, from uh, three major manufacturers and we observed that most of them are vulnerable to row hammers. And we observed that uh, all modules from two to, uh, 2012 and later on are vulnerable to row hammers. Uh, when we investigate why this is happening, we see that it's happening because DRAM cells are too close to each other and they're not electrically isolated anymore from each other. So accessing to one cell affect the value in the by cell uh, due to two reasons. One is electrical interference between the cells and wires used for accessing the cells, and also the coupling or interference between two cells. And as a result, when we activate or apply high voltage to a row, and this row gets slightly activated as well, and this causes it to uh, leak some charge. And when this happens many times, it uh, loses its charge and causes a bit of So the simple circuit level failure mechanism has enormous implications on upper layers of transformation hierarchy from the algorithm down to microarchitecture. And here is a simple program that can induce many uh, bit flips uh, using raw hammer. Uh, what it does is basically it avoids cache hits by using flash instructions and it avoids row hits by interleaving between two rows across its activity. So it uh, first accesses row X here and then row Y and then row X again and then row Y. And it uh, does this many times. And as a result, you see bit flips in the nearby uh, rows. And you can actually run this program on some Intel and AMD based systems and you can observe many bit flips. And therefore, it's a real reliability and security issue that can be exploited from the user level. So we published the uh, Philippine bit paper in ISTA 2014. And uh, only one year later, Google Project Zero came up with a reliable system level draw hammer uh, attack that uh, leverages draw hammer to uh, gain kernel privileges. And what they do is basically they uh, attack to page table entries and into the flips there. And it gives them the right access to their own page table and hence uh, gain read write access to all physical memory. And this is the DRAM draw hammer vulnerability. And it's identified on web as like, it's, it's like breaking into an apartment by repeatedly slamming a neighbor's door until the vibrations open the door you were at. After the discovery of ProHammer, many system level attacks are proposed uh, using uh, JavaScript code, using mo on mobile devices, uh, using GPUs, um, uh, using RDMA requests or network packets uh, for uh, for inducing ProHammer bit uh, and so on. So uh, ProHammer is used for taking over the system by Google Project Zero in 2015. But later on, it also found uh, new use cases. Uh, for example, this paper is uh, not taking over the system, but 
leaking uh, security critical data without being known. And also there are papers proposing that uh, we can uh, induce draw hammer bit flips in the weight of uh, some uh, critical net neural network workloads and uh, therefore reduce their accuracy significantly. And there's also strong evidence showing that draw hammer is not only a DRAM problem, but also uh, can be uh, observed in some non-flash memories and uh, some other emerging technologies. So are there more security implications? And the answer is probably yes. Uh, so to cover all the uh, from the early uh, uh, works of Raw Hammer, uh, I, I would like to refer you to uh, uh, a retrospective paper published in 2019. And uh, I'll continue with um, recent works on understanding Raw Hammer. So this was the first work in ISCA 14. And then uh, uh, in this work, we, we looked at, we used this infrastructure and we tested many DRAM modules from 2008 to 2014. And uh, we have some uh, characterization results that I will explain uh, partially here. So for example, in this uh, plot, we have on the x-axis the row address difference between the victim and aggressor. So it's relative address of the victim row based on the aggressor row. And we see most of the bit flips, uh, you can see the bit flips on the y-axis, most of the bit flips on the adjacent row. And we also see some bit flips in non-adjacent row. So the most aggressors and victims are adjustment. And we looked at how raw hammer bit flips uh, are affected by the access interval. So it seems like when you increase the access interval, then you induce uh, fewer bit flips. And uh, we observed that uh, when we have more frequent refreshes, we uh, observe fewer bit flips and uh, show that uh, there are some data patterns that are uh, showing more vulnerability uh, to raw hammer. And we also have some other key observations. We show that raw hammer with themselves are not necessarily correlated with retention with cells. And uh, raw hammer bit flips are repeatable, and as many as four errors per cache line can be observed. Uh, therefore, simple fact that ECT cannot prevent all errors. And cells are affected by two aggressors on either side. Okay, so um, this is the uh, summary of the this paper from 2014, only the characterization part. And in 2020, we actually extended and repeated some of these experiments, and uh, we build on our understanding by uh, uh, providing a deeper look into hammer sensitivities and how it varies with uh, word line voltage in two other papers. Okay, so I'll go back to the understanding of hammer papers, but before that, I, I'd like to also talk about the solutions a little bit. So in the flipping bit paper in IFCA 14, we uh, classify solutions in two categories, immediate solutions and long-term solutions. Immediate solutions are targeting DRAM chips in the field, uh, and uh, long-term solutions are uh, targeting the chips that will come in the future. And our ISCA 14 paper proposes both types of solutions, and uh, it's seven solutions in total. Um, so one solution can be make better DRAM chip or refresh frequently or sophisticated DCT, and uh, we can also uh, count the activities and uh, make some uh, countermeasures, uh, trigger some countermeasures based on that. And all of these uh, solutions uh, require some cost, power, and complexity uh, trade offs. Um, so after our paper, uh, Apple simply increased the memory refresh rate and uh, tried uh, avoiding draw hammer bit flips uh, doing so. And um, But in this paper, we have a better solution called para probable schedules row activation. And the key idea is after closing a row, we activate one of the neighbors with a low probability. And uh, by doing so, we uh, uh, significantly reduce the probability of observing a row hammer bit. Uh, so para refresh is rows infrequently, so it has low power overhead and low performance overhead. And it's stateless, therefore it doesn't require any hardware complex or cost. So Para is an effective and low overhead solution to prevent disturbance errors. And if implementing the DRAM chip as done today, uh, it just needs enough select in timing to in, in, of the refresh parameter so that it can perform all the refreshes. And if implementing the memory control, it definitely needs a, a good coordination between controller and the DRAM chip. And you can see a screenshot from some uh, BIOS settings uh, that shows that Para is actually implemented in the real system as well. Okay, this is the Philippine Best paper, and uh, I'd like to draw the takeaway, the key takeaway way of main memory needs, intelligent controllers for security, safety, reliability, and scaling. Now, on, on the side, I'd like to mention that we already have intelligent controllers designed for non-flashes, and uh, we have uh, many examples of different intelligent flash controllers, and we, we need some similar uh, controllers uh, for uh, uh, addressing DRAM scalability problems as well. And you can see more detailed lectures on Rohammer in the following link. Okay. Uh, and uh, we also have more retrospective papers about Rohammer and future problems we, we might see. And um, uh, we also have a more recent Rohammer paper here you can find in the links. Okay, let's let's look at the Rohammer studies between 2020 and 2022. The first one is the recent Rohammer where we actually where we characterized uh, 1580 chip uh, and show that newer DRAM chips are much more vulnerable to Rohammer. Uh, they observe more bit flips and the bit flips happen in smaller activation counts. And uh, uh, these activation counts are can be as small as 4800 as opposed to it was 70,000, 80,000 in the uh, paper we published in 2014. 
2014. Uh, so shifts of newer DRAM technology nodes can exhibit Rohama bit flips in more roles and farther away from the victim role. And existing mitigation mechanisms are not effective at future technology, unfortunately. So uh, this is the testing infrastructure we used in this uh, paper. We tested both uh, all DDR3, DDR4, and LTDDR4 chips. And it's 1,580 DRAM chips in total from three major manufacturers. And we showed that Rohammer bit flips increase when going from all to new DDR4 technology node generations. And Rohammer bit flip rates increase with technology node generations significantly. And at the same time, when we look at the uh, the hammer count or the activation count needed to uh, needed for the first bit flip, we observed that it significantly reduces, meaning that newer chips from each DRAM manufacturer are more vulnerable to draw hammers. Therefore, HD uh, first or the minimum activation count required for uh, inducing draw hammer bit flips reduced significantly. And uh, there are chips so we could stop fail after only 4,800 hammers. Uh, this is the full paper. I'll refer you to uh, that uh, for more details. And you can also see a detailed lecture on resistant raw hammers in the, uh, on YouTube. After we published the ISCO 14 paper, some DRAM manufacturers claimed that their newer DRAM chips uh, already have embedded solutions for raw hammer and therefore they are not uh, vulnerable to raw hammer anymore. So to investigate that, we did a study called TRATPAD. TRATPAD is published in SMP in 2020. And it was the first work to show that the target draw refresh uh, protected DRAM chips that uh, are vulnerable, um, that are not supposed to be vulnerable to draw hammer, uh, are actually vulnerable to draw hammer. And uh, TRATPAD introduces the many sided draw hammer attack. It's a new attack type and it hammers many roads to bypass uh, these implemented mitigation mechanisms. And partial, also partially reverse engineers the uh, target or refresh or pseudo target or refresh mitigation mechanisms implemented in DRAM chips. And it provides an automatic tool that can effectively create many sided draw hammer attacks in DDR4 and LTDR4. This is a, a representation of the many sided hammering. Uh, for this work, we tested many DRAM modules. We showed this vulnerability on some real mobile phones. We, we conducted draw hammer at system level draw hammer attacks uh, to page table entry to steal RSA keys and to gain pseudo privileges, and uh, they were quite successful. Um, so uh, 13 out of 42 tested DDR4 DRAM modules are vulnerable to raw hammers, uh, and 5 out of 13 mobile phones tested are vulnerable, and these results, these results are the threat in the surface, and uh, because trespass tool is not exhaustive, and there's a lot of room for uncovering more vulnerable chips and phones, uh, what we did, uh, just like what we did today. Uh, so trespass shows that raw hammer is still an open problem, and security by obscurity, as the manufacturers did, is likely not a good solution. Uh, and you can find more details about Trustpad in on YouTube. Uh, and this is a full paper of Trustpad. We also looked at how to guarantee uh, that a chip is raw hammer free or not. And we showed that it's not actually easy to uh, prove that a chip is raw hammer free. It's very hard to guarantee. And other work that I'm going to talk about is uncovering TRR almost lately. So uh, uncovering DRAM raw hammer protection mechanisms. So this is implemented in micro 2021 uh, based on Trustpad. Um, so the, this paper is asking the question is TRR fully secure? How can we validate that security guarantees? And it provides a new methodology that leverages data retention failures to uncover the inner workings of target draw refresh mechanisms and study their security. And as a result of this methodology, it comes up with new raw hammer access patterns that uh, shows that TRR does not provide security against raw hammers. And new TRR, uh, this methodology, can facilitate the development of new raw hammer attacks and more secure raw hammer protection mechanisms. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to go into details about UTRR, but the key idea is to use data retention failures as a side channel to detect when a row is refreshed by TRR. And this is the infrastructure we use for UTRR. And we came up with new row hammer access patterns uh, for these particular DRAM chips. And we showed that uh, all 45 modules that we tested are vulnerable. And almost all rows uh, exhibit uh, row hammer bit flips. Uh, and uh, we observed that uh, there are many data chunks uh, or data words with three and more up to seven row hammer bit flips. So the conventional DRAM ECC cannot protect against uh, our new row hammer access path. Uh, and there are many more observations and results in the paper, so I'll refer you to the paper for more. So we didn't stop here. We, we also did some uh, new raw hammer uh, characterization studies. So the first one is a deeper look into raw hammer sensitivities, in particular to temperature, aggressive raw active time, and we can DRAM cell physical location. And we use this infrastructure for that uh, on many chips, uh, 272 DRAM chips from four major manufacturers. And uh, we draw some takeaways and all observations, and we can summarize them by saying a raw hammer bit flip is more likely to occur in a bounded range of temperature if the aggressive row is active for longer time. In certain physical regions of DRAM module under attack. So for example, if you act, uh, instead of activating aggressive row as frequently as possible, if you keep aggressive rows active for a longer time, you 
can reduce the number of activations that you need to induce a build follow-up significantly. <laughs> and by doing that, you can bypass defenses that do not account for this reduction. And uh, when you look at the special variation uh, of row hammer vulnerability across uh, different DRAM rows and columns, uh, we observe some design induced and manufacturing process induced variation. And we also see that at, uh, the, the rows in a tab array um, uh, exhibit uh, a significant variation, but uh, tab arrays uh, that belong to the same chip uh, be, uh, show similar distribution. And when we look at the minimum activation count to observe bit flip across different rows, uh, we can see a significant variation uh, in these values. And uh, the significant variation uh, is true uh, for all four manufacturers. And we observe that, and we observe that uh, the 10% of the DRAM uh, rows uh, are significantly more vulnerable uh, than the uh, vast majority of the, the, and than the remaining of rows. And when we look at the columns, we all see uh, a lot of variation in columns, and some columns are much more vulnerable than uh, other columns uh, to row hammer. And we can uh, leverage this variation to uh, improve some defense mechanisms. For example, we can uh, leverage the variation across DRAM rows to reduce the area, area cost of uh, existing row hammer mitigation mechanisms, such as block hammer and graphene. And we can also uh, leverage the variation with temperature uh, to uh, retire or disable temporarily the DRAM rows that are vulnerable to the uh, row hammer uh, at the current operating temperature. Uh, I'll refer you to this paper for more detail and uh, uh, publish another paper on DSM 2022 uh, showing row hammer's vulnerable sensitivity to uh, wordline voltage. And for that, we improved our infrastructure to externally uh, provide the uh, wordline voltage and uh, change it as according to our needs. And we observe that reducing uh, the uh, word line voltage reduces row hammer vulnerability uh, at the cost of increasing row activation latency and reducing the data retention time. But uh, our analysis shows that uh, these uh, row activation latency and retention related parameters already have strong guard bands. And uh, therefore, reducing word line voltage can reduce row hammer vulnerability without significant effect in reliable DRAM operation. And we also look at uh, new row hammer solutions. Uh, for example, uh, Block Hammer is published in HPC 2021. And uh, it is uh, classified. It, it classifies uh, the row hammer solution approach into five categories, uh, more robust DRAM shift and or error correcting causes the first category. The second one is increasing refresh rate, physical isolation of the third, um, refreshing prevent, uh, preventively refreshing victim rows is the fourth one, and the proactive throttle is the fifth one. And all of these uh, approaches come with a trade-off of cost, power, performance, and complexity. So among these, uh, we identify two uh, main challenges at scalable to worsen row hammer vulnerability and compatibility with commodity DRAM chips. And our goal here is to prevent row hammer efficiently and scalably without the knowledge of or modifications to DRAM internals so that we can have compatibility with the common to DRAM. And uh, our key idea is selectable throttle memory activities that may cause row hammer. But basically how it happens is a row hammer attack hammers row A and block hammer detects a row hammer attack is uh, going on uh, using area efficient balloon filters and uh, it selectable throttle the activities from within the memory controller directly in the particular row. Therefore, uh, no bit flips occur and block hammer uh, provides a secure row hammer safe operation. And block hammer can optionally inform the system software about that. So Block Hammer is compatible with commodity DRAM chips as it does not need proprietary info or modifications to DRAM chip. And here are some results. Uh, we found there's no row hammer attack, Block Hammer's performance and energy overheads remain negligible below 0.6%. And when there's a row hammer attack, it uh, provides much higher performance uh, and lower energy consumption than state-of-the-art mechanisms due to throttle in the row hammer attack complete. Uh, so Block Hammer is competitive with state-of-the-art mechanisms when there's no attack and very, provides very performance and DRAM energy when row hammer attack is present and better hardware area scaling with Rohammer vulnerability. In the paper, we provide a mathematical security proof showing that Block Hammer is secure uh, and uh, a methodology of addressing many size attack. We evaluate 14 mechanisms of the time across four desirable properties, and we show that Block Hammer is the only solution that satisfies all four desirable properties. Um, we have more in the paper. I'm not going to iterate these, so you can check later. Uh, Block Hammer is the first part to practically enable throttling based Rohammer mitigation, and um, it's implemented completely in the memory controller, so no proprietary information or modifications of the DRAM chips are needed. And it's scalable with virtual row hammer and compatible with common DRAM chips. And it's open source along with six state-of-the-art mechanisms on GitHub. Uh, main memory needs intelligent controllers for security, safety, reliability, and scaling. And there's always room for improvement. So uh, in 2022, for example, uh, on top of all these row hammer solution approaches, we uh, started seeing new, uh, a new approach based on row migration. 
the key idea is basically dynamically remap an aggressive role's uh, address to a different physical role before a row hammer with filter occurs. So this method does not require refresh on victim roles, but it relocates the aggressive roles data. So there's that uh, uh, cost. And uh, we see two papers from last year and two papers coming up this year uh, implementing this methodology. As you see in, among these work, um, uh, we are not the only group working on row hammer. There are many, uh, many other groups and uh, papers coming up. Uh, for example, between 2020 and 2022, uh, we see many uh, papers and top conferences such as micro uh, security and privacy, using security, hot OS, using security, micro uh, ISO security and privacy, HPCA, IRPS, using security, CCS, and micro again. Um, I'd like to highlight uh, one more work uh, from our group. Uh, it's called Hira, Hidden Row Activation. Uh, we basically found a new operation that converts the DRAM chip support to uh, reduce the refresh latency of off the shelf DRAM chip. Um, and uh, we also have to archive papers. Uh, one, the, the first one is a positioning paper about uh, transparent reliability in DRAM systems. And second one is proposing uh, how can we uh, build DRAM chips that have self-managing capability. So I'll quickly talk about self-managing DRAM. So the problem this paper tackles is that when we need a new maintenance operation, uh, it's hard to implement due to strict uh, communication protocol and uh, requiring many changes to the DRAM chip and the memory controller and different uh, parts of the system stack. Um, so if we can uh, enable DRAM chips to perform these uh, maintenance operations internally, uh, we can uh, build a new maintenance operation uh, for newer DRAM chips in a quicker and easier way. And the key idea to enable this is to prevent the memory control from accessing DRAM regions that are under maintenance by rejecting raw activation commands. And by doing this, uh, Tough Management DRAM shows that we can easily implement DRAM refresh, draw hammer protection, and memory scrubbing. Tough Management DRAM enables implementing new in DRAM maintenance mechanisms with no further changes in DRAM interface and memory control. There's a, uh, there's a live seminar on YouTube uh, talking about Tough Management DRAM, so I'm going to refer you to there. Uh, and this is the full paper. Uh, so IEEE security and privacy already uh, have two papers coming up on 2023, and HPC also have two papers. So uh, we expect more raw hammer papers to come. And uh, I'd like to talk about future memory reliability and security challenges. Uh, so DRAM is becoming less reliable, and it's obvious. And due to difficulties in DRAM scaling, other problems may also appear. And we also we already see raw hammer and retention errors getting worse. And these errors can also put security vulnerability. And these vulnerabilities are not only true for DRAM, but also for flash memory and emerging technologies. The solution for main memory is in intelligent controllers for security, safety, reliability, and scaling. And intelligent memory controllers can avoid many failures and enable better so to architect future memory for security, we need to understand. Uh, for that, we need to develop methods for vulnerability modeling and discovery. Modeling and prediction based on real device data and analysis is important. Understanding vulnerabilities is crucial. And uh, developing reliable metrics is also important. Uh, for architecting, we need principled architectures with security as key concern. And good partitioning of DTs across the stack can be beneficial. Cannot give up, uh, we cannot give up performance and efficiency. And patchability in the field for new architectures is important. Uh, for also, design and test, we need a principled approach. Uh, for, uh, we need to design for security and high coverage and good interaction with system reliable. Uh, at future directions, we need to understand raw hammer better. There's still more work uh, that needs to be done for uh, investigating raw hammer sensitivity to aging of DRAM chips, environmental conditions, and memory access patterns. And also for solving raw hammer, there are two directions that we propose in this paper. Uh, one is co architecting system and memory to avoid performance and denial of service problems that the current raw hammer mitigation mechanism can uh, cause. And uh, we can achieve this by throttling and relocating our isolated threads. Uh, and another direction is flexible and efficient raw hammer solutions to leverage the variation in raw hammer vulnerability. And uh, this comes with in-field patchable, reconfigurable, and programmable solutions. And uh, for all these, we definitely need better communication between the DRAM chips and the controller. And I'd like to remind you this paper. And we need a better coordination of DRAM and controllers. And uh, I strongly recommend you to take a look at the soft engine DRAM paper. To understand this vulnerability more, we need uh, the Definitely more experiments, and we need to build on our infrastructures, just like how we did for flash devices. And um, as an example, intelligent controllers, we can see many intelligent controllers in flash memory based solid state drive, and we need similar intelligent controllers for DRAM chips in the future. And in field patchability is the key for intelligent memory that can avoid such failures. And I'd like to remind you again about the memory scaling positioning paper. 
in 2013 uh, that has an early proposal for intelligent controllers. And uh, industry is also writing papers about it, uh, saying that uh, we need to co-architect controllers and DRAM to enhance DRAM process scaling. So before raw hammers, we needed this kind of intrusive uh, methodology to induce pitfalls in the main memory, uh, such as like physical accesses to the target systems. But after raw hammers, we can do this uh, only by software. So uh, Drawhammer uh, set up a new mindset that has enabled a renewed interest in hardware security attack research. Uh, so we see that real memory chips are vulnerable in a simple and widespread manner. This causes real security problems. Hardware reliability security connection is now mainstream disclosed, this course, and uh, many new Drawhammer attacks are coming. Tons of papers and top security and architecture will use more to come as Drawhammer is getting worse. And many new Drawhammer solutions, and there are more to come. And perhaps most importantly, Drawhammer enabled a shift of mindset in mainstream security researchers. General purpose hardware is fallible in a widespread manner as problems are exploitable. This mindset has enabled many systems security researchers to examine hardware in more depth and understand hardware's inner workings and vulnerabilities. It's no coincidence that two of the groups that discovered Meltdown and Spectre have the work on Rohammer attacks before, and there will be more attacks to come. In conclusion, memory reliability is reducing, reliability issues open, reliability issues open up security vulnerabilities. They are very hard to defend against. Rohammer is a prime example of this. It is the first example, first example of how a simple hardware failure mechanism can create a widespread system security vulnerability. Its implications on system security research are tremendous and exciting. And there are bad, there's bad news, draw hammers get worse. And there's also good news, we have a lot more to do. To fully, uh, we, we are already fully aware hardware is easily fallible. We are developing both attacks and solutions. And we're developing principal models, methodologies, and solutions. And I'd like to remind you about the retrospective paper and lectures on draw hammers. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank to our founders uh, for their uh, support on our research. And I'd like to acknowledge all the members of Safari Research Group. And this is Safari Research Group. Uh, we have some newsletters uh, coming up this year as well. Uh, and we have some uh, lecture videos on YouTube that you can take a look uh, about computer architecture, digital design, and some uh, project-oriented courses as well. And this is the end of my talk. Thanks for listening. I'm happy to answer your questions.